come on in, pull up a chair and take a load off because today I'll be sharing my favorite role-playing games of 2020. And I'll be diving in right after this. Howdy, 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 gang. Welcome once again to the Duct Tape Studios. I'm Jeff McAleer, your host here at the Gaming Gang channel. As I mentioned in the open, I'm going to be sharing my favorite role-playing games of 2020 in just a moment. But first, I do want to remind you, if you like this video, by all means, please give it a quick thumbs up. Subscribe to the Gaming Gang channel if you haven't already. And if you do subscribe, ding that bell because it'll not only let you know when I upload videos such as this, it'll also inform you when my live stream, The Gaming Gang Dispatch, airs right here on YouTube, Monday through Thursday nights, as I share the latest in tabletop gaming news. And of course, when you're not watching videos on The Gaming Gang channel, be sure to visit thegaminggang.com for all latest in gaming news, reviews, and a whole lot more. Get your geek on at thegaminggang.com. Do you want to mention I'm recording this on New Year's Eve 2020. So the first thing I'd like to say is Happy New Year to all of you. Thank you so much for joining me once again. And I certainly do hope 2021 is much better than 2020 because in a lot of ways, 2020 was a dumpster fire. But that said, I gotta say, 2020 was pretty good for the gaming gang. Once again, the website drew over a million unique visitors and the YouTube channel actually drew over a quarter of a million viewers on the gaming gang videos. I know for other outlets, those numbers are peanuts, but this is a really small team here at the gaming gang and we operate on a budget of essentially zero. So I'm pretty proud. That said, I'm going to be sharing my favorite role-playing games of 2020. A few things I do want to point out. These are my favorites. I can't say these are the best role-playing games of 2020 because I did not have an opportunity to look at every role-playing game release of 2020. So it'd be silly for me to say, oh, these are the best. Plus, I feel goofy putting a best of on something. I do want to say these are my favorites. These are the role-playing releases that I enjoyed the most, that I thought were the most interesting. And I really like these a lot. Also, you might notice there are a couple of these that did not come out in 2020. That said, I didn't have an opportunity to actually see these and review these until this year. So that's why they are on the list. Also, you might find that there are some review scored RPGs from the gaming gang that scored a little higher than what I'm sharing here, but you're not going to see them as one of my favorites. And that's simply because after I did my reviews, maybe I've looked through something else or, or kind of went back to one of these releases to dig further into them. And I like them a little bit more. Not to say that those other reviewed items aren't worthy of being on this list. It's just these are my favorites. Also, Sammy has done some reviews of PDFs on the Gaming Gang website, and there have been some fantastic releases that she has reviewed. They are not included here, including the Uncaged Anthology of Dungeons and Dragons Adventures, the Call of Cthulhu campaign, Children of Fear, simply because I have not read them. So I'm only sharing my favorites. <laughs> so lastly, your mileage might vary. So you might see some releases here that I find are my favorites of 2020. And you might scratch your head and go, what? What can I tell you? All right, without further ado, let's dive on in because first up for Pathfinder 2nd Edition is the Pathfinder Bestiary 2. 
I really, I really love best years. I gotta say, I have a soft spot for monster manuals and things like that. And I tend to find that I spend a lot of time reading through best series. And, and, you know, as a game master, I kind of think, Ooh, yeah, I could, Ooh, I could see using these in in this situation here. Oh, wow. I, Oh, I, I could unleash, you know, the special abilities that this creature has. I, I just really love looking through best series, monster manuals, what have you. This is full of a lot of excellent creatures and, you know, Normal animals as well that were not covered in the initial bestiary. And these will certainly come in handy for just about any game master out there. Love the fact that just about every single one of these entries has artwork. So you notice as I'm flipping through, we've got artwork on every page. But there is still tons of gameable information in here. So it's not suffering that there's too much art and not enough gaming material. It is jam packed with loads of excellent monsters, creatures, and animals to bring to your Pathfinder second edition game. Very, very nicely done. Very, very jam packed with gaming goodness. Really, really like the best theory two for second edition Pathfinder. Next up, from Free League Publishing, I've got the Alien role-playing game. This is the starter set. I did not have an opportunity to check out the core rulebook that came out, which I, I do believe right now is sold out. But the starter set contains just about everything you need to jump in. Look at all these dice. Tons of dice. Everything you need to jump into the Alien role-playing game if you're going to run what are known as cinematic adventures. So we've got the rule book as well as a cinematic adventure chariot of the gods. So in the rule book here, going to give you all the information that you need as far as gameplay. So of course, you're not going to find a lot of the campaign information here, which was all located in the core rule book. But I got to be very honest, I see the alien role-playing game more as a short campaign. I don't want to say one shot because most of the adventures you'd be playing are going to take longer than just a single session. But short campaigns, maybe three, four sessions for the adventures. I think this is a perfect system to utilize for that. It does use free leagues year one engine it's modified a little bit there are some tweaks to it as well but it is a d6 pool system here really really well done i have to point out i was i was disappointed with the tales from the loop starter set when that came out from free league and i was a little concerned with the alien the role-playing game starter set but I have to say, this is top-notch. This is excellent, especially if you're interested in running shorter alien-centric campaigns as opposed to having a big, long, ongoing campaign with the same characters. Really, really well done. Next up, I've got the first chapter of the Enemy Within campaign. This is the revamped Enemy Within campaign. This is Enemy in Shadows. For Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay 4th Edition from Cubicle 7 Entertainment. And I know a lot of folks out there were a little curious what was going to happen when Cubicle 7 announced that they were revamping the enemy within. They brought in Graham Davis, who was one of the original authors of that famed campaign. So a lot, I know a lot of people were kind of curious. Were there going to be a lot of changes to this? Was it just going to be kind of just the same as had been previously released a few times and just updated to fourth edition? And I will point out that there is loads that is new in the Enemy in Shadows. 
And if you're a fan of Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay, you really do owe it to yourself to either run this as a game master or convince your game master to run this. Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay has a specific vibe. It is not high fantasy. It's not epic fantasy. It's, it's a bit more down and dirty and gritty. But it also has a bit of a sense of humor as well. And I certainly enjoy that also. It is a game that is not real heavy into combat because combat is lethal in this game. This is one of the more lethal combat systems in all of fantasy role-playing games. So the player characters tend to try to come up with other options rather than just, you know, taking out the sword or <laughs> pulling out the war hammer to start smacking people around. Really well done. Really, really enjoyed this. There's also a companion for the first part. It's the Enemy in Shadows companion. Also really, really well done from Cubicle 7 Entertainment. Highly recommend the first chapter in the Enemy Within campaign, Enemy in Shadows. Next up from Chaosium Inc. comes Milius Monstrum. I'm going to pull this on out here. This is a slipcase set. And it is a two-volume bestiary for Call of Cthulhu. So that's volume two. Here's volume one. I'll pace through really, really fast. Just kind of give you a, a look at some of this so you get a better idea. I got to say that there have been a good number of Call of Cthulhu best series over the years, monster books, monster manuals, whatever you want to consider them. They pale in comparison to this slipcase set. They really, really do. Anything you could have possibly ever looked for as far as the Cthulhu mythos is going to be in this book, in the two books, I should say. So the first volume is essentially monsters and creatures. We do get some, some uh, animals at the end as well that you might encounter. So we get stats for those. For example, camel, large bat, swarm, big cats. So the first book is pretty much creatures, monsters, the second book is the deities of the mythos. And the only quibble I had with this second book is it's a little lighter on artwork. But the great old ones are all in here. And any information you wanted as far as the various different great old ones or the others as far as and their cults and their followers and how you can utilize them in your Call of Cthulhu campaigns. It is all inside here. But as, as you can see, as I'm paging through, it's a little lighter on the artwork than the first volume. And, and that was the only thing that I was kind of like, eh, I wish there was more art in this book. But all together, both volumes for the Melius Monstrarum are excellent. They are fantastic. If you run Call of Cthulhu, you need to have this. You really do. And of course, it, everything I'm showing you is available in PDF as well. So you don't necessarily have to go out and grab the physical releases for these. So want to point that out as well. Next up. We've got the Pathfinder Beginner Box from Paizo Inc. The Starfinder Beginner Box was excellent, had everything you needed to, to dive on into Starfinder, and Paizo's done it again. This Beginner Box is just packed. Of course, I've got that <laughs> upside down. So it's jam-packed with, with all the goodies that you need. Let's open this up. And I'll show you. So you've got your dice. And one of the things I had mentioned in the review 
was when I first saw the dice, I thought, wait a second, why why are these all different colors? Why wouldn't they just why wouldn't they just have them all like one color as a set? Well, it turns out that on the character sheets, they're all it's color coded to help the players understand what die is what. Which I thought, oh wow. That's that's awesome. That's excellent. Why didn't I just think of that right off the bat when I looked? So we've got a bunch of the standees because you've got pawns in here. We've got some player aid cards here. We've got, ah, come on. We've got the Game Master's Guide. It's got a, It's actually got two adventures. One is kind of a, a solitaire adventure to kind of give you a, a flavor of the game. And then we'll also have another short adventure. We get a bit of a bestiary in this as well. See, that's the color coding I was talking about there. We get the Hero's Handbook, which is kind of player's handbook for us here. Jam-packed with goodies. This is this starts off with uh, a bit of a kind of like a create-your-own-adventure just for a few pages. So you can jump on in, gives you an example of gameplay. And it talks about everything you need. One of the cool aspects of the Pathfinder 2nd Edition beginner box that you don't see with all beginner boxes, starter sets, what have you, you have the rules here for character creation. Now, granted, it's not all the different classes. It's not all the different cultures. It's not all the different backgrounds. But you've got plenty of information here to, to get some, some solid beginning characters out there, which a lot of times you don't see in the starter set. So I really, really love that. We also get some pre-gens. We get the uh, tokens as well. We get a flip mat, character sheets. Here are the pawns. I'm not going to take everything outside the box because, of course, I did that during the review. Just like I said, this is jam-packed with gaming material, and I love it. I gave this my highest recommendation as well. So if you have any inkling or interest in checking out the second edition of Pathfinder, you can do no wrong in picking up the beginner box. And this is also available in PDF. All right, moving right along. Dungeon Pets, which is from Josh Skull Dixon. I thought this was just a riot. Once again, this is a little bit of a bestiary. But in my opinion, role-playing games should be fun. And yes, you can you can run scary Call of Cthulhu games. You can you can run really intense cyberpunk sort of games. But still, they should always be fun. And that is something that this little bestiary has in spades. Of course, this is more towards fantasy games. But one of the cool aspects I thought about this is we actually have rules to use these with different games. So we actually get 5th edition, of course, which, obviously enough, you can convert to OSR pretty easily. So here we go. We got the 5th edition. We got Shadowrun. If you wanted to use these in Shadowrun, or RuneQuest, or Traveler. I thought that was great. This is just so well done. And the book, production-wise, is great. The artwork really pops. And once again, this is also available in PDF. But this is Dungeon Pets, and this is written and illustrated by Josh Skull Dixon. Gave this my highest recommendation as well. All right, let's take a look at another release from Free League Publishing, and that is Lawson. Nordic horror role playing. This is so cool. I really, really dig this uh, role playing game. I'm curious to see how much support this is going to get 
from Free League because Free League's got a lot of games going on right now. But I love the artwork. The artwork has a very unique style to it. One aspect of this game is that this is another game where you aren't going to want to just automatically default to combat every time you're challenged during the game because many of these like monsters and creatures they're they're not going to be harmed by physical weapons so definitely thought this is very very cool this is kind of victorian age and if you know kind of kind of funny is if you're if you're a fan of what they call like regency shows on tv th this is a perfect role playing game for fans of regency shows because you can take the uh the kind of it's it's usually like late 18th century early 19th century uh european stories what they used to call like bodice rippers or whatever and then put in this really kind of I mean, it's not super horrifying. It's not not really, like, gruesome or graphic. It's more gothic horror than anything else. I just think this is just awesome. Really, really like this a lot. This is also a system that utilizes the Year One engine from Free League Publishing, tweaks it a little bit. And this is not a an extremely difficult game to wrap your head around either. In fact, the year one engine is, is pretty intuitive for new gamers, far more intuitive than say fifth edition or Pathfinder. Certainly not as crunchy at all. Really, really nicely done. And of course the production quality on this is top notch. And that is Lawson from free league publishing. All right, next up, I've got the Traveler Starter Set from Mongoose Publishing. And this came out before 2020. So as I mentioned in the open, there are some games that are not from this year, but this was the first opportunity I had to check them out. And I give really high marks to the Traveler Starter Set because this is another beginner box that's got everything you need to play so what mongoose did is they actually took the big core book and they actually just separated it out into two books so these two books here are essentially the core rules so if you went and purchased the core rule book this is what you would have Page numbers are a little bit different, but in essence, you've got everything you need. So as a starter set, this really isn't one of those starter sets where it's like, oh, well, here's some pre-generated characters, and we're not going to give you the rules to, to actually create characters. No, everything's in here. All the rules are in here. Everything you need is already in here as well. And if you are a fan of Traveler, back from, say, the Game Designers Workshop days, then you will certainly love the second edition of Mongoose Traveler. It's it's just much more intuitive rules-wise. You don't necessarily uh, have to have the option where your your character could die in, in character creation. You, you can keep it if you want, but it is not necessarily uh, the default. One aspect of this that uh, I would have liked to have seen is a little more artwork. There's artwork sprinkled throughout. And one aspect I do like is that the weapons all have images, which is very cool, especially for a science fiction games, for a science fiction game, I should say, where these weapons don't exist in the real world. So we've got the characters in combat. We have spaceship and worlds. Really, really well done. And then we do also have not just 
a starting adventure, but this is a starting campaign. There is loads of gaming going to go on in our adventure, the Fall of Tanath. And we get some, some maps here as well. We do have some pre-generated characters too, but as I mentioned, we also have all the rules to generate our own characters, and I love that. I love when we get that. That is the Traveler Starter Set from Mongoose Publishing. Now, one of the more recent reviews, in fact, this was just the other day that I did, is Warhammer 40K Roleplay Wrath and Glory. This is the core rulebook. This is the Cubicle 7 Entertainment revamp of the Ulysses system. So this is uh, still utilizing that same D6 dice pool. It's just cleaned a lot of stuff up. I like the original edition that came out, but there were problems with it. Um, wasn't the clearest game to understand in a lot of ways. There was conflicting information depending on what page you were on. Well, all of that is gone. And it's got all new artwork. It's got tons more background information as well. Essentially what's going on here is this is taking place in the Gilead system, which uh, there's a great rift, which has actually kind of divided the system. And, and they're no longer in contact with the Imperium. So you'll find that, uh, of course, chaos is involved. So you're going to have various different uh, types of characters who would never actually be allies in the usual Warhammer 40K universe. Well, they're thrown together to uh, battle the forces of chaos. So very cool. Really, really like the book. And there's tons of background information that's been added to this. It clocks in at 381 pages. And off the top of my head, that's a, about a good 100 pages more than the original edition had. So very, very cool. Of course, this is one of these games where your mileage is going to vary. I am not heavily invested in Warhammer 40K. So... I might be sitting here saying, wow, I really, really like this. And if you are a serious Warhammer 40K Groyard, you might be like, eh, no. But I do think this is really, really well done, in my opinion. Next, we have Mazes, which is from Ninth Level Games. So these are, these are digest-sized books. These are not available in PDF, I should point out, although they might be in the future. And I do understand that Ninth Level Games is considering doing a Kickstarter, because this originally was a Kickstarter, but they're considering doing a Kickstarter to put all these books into one volume. So this is kind of an OSR rules light game, which uses the polymorph system, which ninth level is famous for, which in essence is, depending on what kind of character you have, what your character's role is, and when I say role, I mean, I mean R-O-L-E, will determine what die you use. So if you are, and here we got the Paragon, the Vanguard, the Fighter, the Sentinel, so if you are a, a character who's very specialized, maybe you're like a magic user, you're going to get a D4. A vanguard, maybe like a rogue thief kind of character, D6, fighter D8. And if you're kind of a jack of all trades or a tank sort of character, you're a sentinel, you'll get a D10. And you're going to always roll that same die. And depending on what you're trying to do, you have to roll these dice to be successful. It is super easy to wrap your head around, very easy to learn, and loads of fun. And what mazes is, it, it actually adapts this to an old-school Renaissance 
sort of vibe. So this is sorcery. It's talking about the various different kinds of, they're not necessarily like archetypes, but it's kind of giving you an idea of the sort of character that you can look to play. So it's not just, oh, I'm just a fighter. Oh, I'm just a magic user. So, and then it talks about spells as well. So that is very cool there. Then we get Maze, which is kind of essentially almost like a Dungeon Master's Guide or Game Master's Guide in a lot of different ways. Talking about how to run the game. And then we've got Monster, which is the bestiary. And it's very, very easy for you to port over just about any other old school fantasy role-playing game monsters over to mazes. Super, super easy to do. I really like this a lot. And I think this is a great way to introduce gamers who have absolutely no experience role-playing to the old school Renaissance kind of vibe of fantasy role-playing games without overwhelming them with a lot of minutia. Really like this a lot. And uh, I will keep you informed of what other releases for this system come out from ninth level games. All right. Next up, I've got Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. You're probably sitting there wondering, Jeff, what's going on? There's, you don't have any Dungeons and Dragons releases in here? Remember, these are my favorites. I did review all of the major Dungeons and Dragons releases from Wizards of the Coast. Some were fine, some were good. There was one that I was, you know, it was, I thought it was all right and people were very upset by my review. But I have to say, Tasha's Cauldron and everything is my favorite of the Dungeons and Dragons releases this year. And a lot of it has to do because it's all these character options. And that is what players want. This is what gamers want right now. That's why these player-facing books for 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons sell so well is because the gamers want this. Now, I'm not saying that the adventures don't sell and the new setting books aren't selling. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying that the, these sorts of books outsell the setting books and the adventure books. And this is jam-packed with gameable material here. Of course, you're not going to use all of it. I would hope you wouldn't use all of it. But you can mix and match, utilize whatever you like. And I got to say, I really, really appreciate all the additional information, all the new backgrounds. There's a lot of new ways to, to flesh out your characters as well. There were some things that I was a little disappointed by, and parlaying with monsters is one, because this was something that was that was kind of really sold as a, being a high point of this book, and it's just this. That's it. And as someone who really loves the OSR movement, I grew up with Advanced Dungeons and Dragons when it first came out. I am a huge fan of non-combat situations and parlaying with monsters and dealing with factions is one of the aspects that older fantasy role-playing games differ in as opposed to many of the newer school of games. But all in all, I, I did think that this was a really, really nicely presented book with loads and loads of gameable information. Can't go wrong with Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. And then my final item on my list is Delta Green, The Labyrinth from Arc Dream Publishing. This did not come out in 2020. In fact, this was up for an any award this past year as well. And I'm a fan of Delta Green. Once again, I, I'm a huge Call of Cthulhu fan. 
I've been running Call of Cthulhu for decades. So I love the Lovecraftian horror, the Cthulhu mythos. Well, one of the cool aspects of this, of course, Delta Green is a modern take on the Cthulhu mythos. And the players normally will represent operatives for a uh, governmental or semi-governmental agencies. And with the Labyrinth, it's all these various different organizations that they might have contact with. And it's a lot of this is pretty dark and pretty, uh, pretty grim, but it is so well done. It is really, really cool. And game masters out there are certainly the handler as they're, called in Delta Green is certainly going to find so much inspiration from these various different groups and, and individuals. There are individuals in here as well that they can utilize in their campaigns. It's just fantastic. I can, I can see why this was nominated for different awards. It is that good. And uh, some of this hits close to home too. This isn't just all, oh, wow, you know, some oddball fake sort of organization. Just kind of give me an idea. Really, really well done. Some of the artwork's pretty creepy as well. And that is the Labyrinth for Delta Green from Arc Dream Publishing. All right, so that is my list of Favorite role-playing games of 2020. Once again, I'm not saying that these are the best. They are my favorites from this past year. Once again, I do want to wish everybody a very happy new year. Uh, I am uh, about eight hours away from ringing in the new year here in the Chicagoland area. And of course, I really do hope you continue to watch the videos here on the Gaming Gang channel as well as visit thegaminggang.com. So if you like this video, by all means, give it a quick thumbs up. Subscribe to the Gaming Gang channel if you haven't already. And if you do subscribe, ding that bell, because not only will it let you know when I upload videos such as this, it'll also inform you when my live stream, The Gaming Gang Dispatch, airs Monday through Thursdays right here on YouTube as I bring you the latest in tabletop gaming news. And of course, during this pandemic, I've been wrapping up all my videos. I should say this never ending pandemic. I've been wrapping up my videos by wishing everyone out there. I should wish everyone once again, a happy new year. But I also wish that all of you out there are being smart and staying safe. Oh, you're still here. Well, if that's the case, if you'd like to subscribe to the Gaming Gang channel, by all means, click right here. And if you'd like to check out one of our recent live streams, click right up top. And if you want to roll the dice and see what the algorithm for YouTube recommends, click right here. And of course, thank you once again for watching. And gang, please stay safe and wear a mask.